Hello and welcome to another video on the foundation degree in integrated engineering. This week we're looking at analog and digital electronics and we're looking at the finite state machine. Um, F8SM you'll see it um, shortened to, one of our three letter acronyms in engineering. Um, the finite state machine is an electronic circuit that has memory. So it remembers what state it's in and the current state it's in will determine what state it will go to on uh, defined triggers. So there are two main types of state machine we, we look at in engineering. Um, the two I was taught and um, they're still going. Um, their design is ever so slightly different but the same process. Um, and a mealy machine the next state it goes into will depend not only on the current state it's in but it will depend on as one or more external inputs as we have here so uh, an example people will generally give you with this is something like a vending machine where you have an external input saying you have the right amount of money in or a certain amount of money has been put in and once the correct amount is in the machine the uh, state machine will trigger the output to dispense a coffee or a tea or a chocolate bar sort of thing. So that is a mealy state machine. Okay, current state and external inputs. A more machine, M double O R E. The next state is solely dependent upon what state we're currently in. So. The more machine is more most commonly used as counters and timers, where we want to count up a certain number, and it's just the, the input state will determine what we count to. Okay. Now I'm going to be slightly weird here, and we're going to do an example, which is a mealy machine. So we've got current state and external inputs. And our mealy machine example is going to be an up down modulo 6 counter. So let's start with this stuff. Up and down. So it will count up or it will count down depending on an external input. Okay. Modulo 6 means it has six states it will count through. So it will count from 0 up to 5. Okay. A modulo 10 counter is what we would call a decade counter we'll count from 0 to 9 so a modulo 6 counter we want it to count to state 5 okay because 0 is of course a number okay so we're going to start counting at 0 depending upon the logic value of an external input we will count up or down one step every clock pulse okay and the external input the up or down trigger going to be if that input is a 1 we'll go up and if it's a 0 we'll go down you might see this on the um, circuits you can buy this as an integrated circuit it will be u slash not d so that implies that if you put a 0 on that input it will count down and if you put a 1 on the input it will count up and that's what we're going to be designing here okay so every design any design merely or more machine it doesn't matter the design starts with a state diagram and the state diagram is a series of circles that are linked by clock pulses so an arrow denotes a clock pulse so in here we're going to start in state zero and with the state diagram what we have is we state what state we're in and underneath we say what the outputs are so in this case we have three flip-flops because we're trying to count to five so we need a three bit counter so each one of these zeros represents one of the flip flops I've called Q2, Q1 and Q0 now when we're in this state if we have a down count we don't want it to count below zero okay so a down count we want it to stay at zero Okay, so our up down trigger if it's a zero we remain in state zero 
But if we have a 1 on that count, we're going to go up to state 1. And the outputs are going to change from 0, 0, 0 to 0, 0, 1. Because we're doing a binary count. So we're 0, 1. Okay. Now if we're in state 1 and we get a down trigger, we want to go back to state 0. So we draw that on our state diagram. Our input is 0, that is going to take us down. Now at this point I'm going to say, if we are a more machine, rather than a melee machine, they will not be an input reference here on the arrow. The, the trigger happens automatically in a more machine, so if this were a more machine counter you'd see a 0, and you'd see the arrow going to state 1, then an arrow going to state 2, and so on. Okay. So if we're in state 1, what happens if we get a 1 on the input? Well, we're going to count upwards. So we go from 1 to 2. And our outputs change accordingly. So we are 0, 1, 2. Okay. Following this logic, count down, we'd go back to state 1. And count up, we'd go to state 3. Output increments down back to 2, up to 4, if we're in state 4, down takes us back to 3, up takes us to state 5. Now state 5 is the one where we have a bit of a difference, because if we're in state 5, okay, 0, fine, we will go back to state 4, we'll count down, but we don't want to count above 5. Okay. So we have an option with our count of saying ok I'll count over the top and I'll just go back to zero but our counter is going to stay at five so if we have a one on this we want it to stay in this state so we put that on the diagram and there our state diagram is complete they're very straightforward they're just designed to give us a graphical impression of what our system is doing. Okay, So once we've got the diagram, being logical and being electronic engineers, we draw ourselves a truth table. So we draw the state table. Okay, And from the state diagram, we're going to build the state table. Now I've changed here just because it fit in the table, it looked a bit better. This up down input I've called C. So this up down is now C in my table. It just fit better and made everything look a bit nicer. Okay, so if we are in 0, 0, 0. This is my first state, 0, 0, 0. And we have a 0 on the count. As you can see here, we want to go to, we want the next value of each output to remain 0, 0, 0. So we put that in our table. Okay. However, if we are a 1, we want the next outputs to be 0, 0, 1. 0, 0, 0. So our next state will be 0, 0, 1. Okay. And we follow our state diagram all the way through. Now a lot of people say, well, why do we draw this? if all the information is going to be copied straight into the table. And my answer is generally is because you actually you can you can see how your flow goes better with a diagram than you can in just a list of zeros and ones in a table. This this shows how the flow it's almost like a flow chart. Yeah, it, it shows you where you're going at each point. So it's always worth drawing both. You might see problems that are going to occur in this table that you wouldn't in this diagram which you wouldn't in this table okay so we're going to go through so if I'm in zero zero one and I have a zero on my uh, count up or down input then I want to go back to zero 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 so that is what I put in that part of the table so what we're doing here for the output is we're building the transitions 
that we're going to do. Are we going to go from a 0 to a 0? Or are we going to go from a 0 to a 1? Now if we're in 0, 0, 1 and I have a 1 count I'm going to go to 0, 1, 0. Now if you look at that then Q1 is going to change from a 0 to a 1 and Q2 is going to change from a 1 to a 0. Okay, so we're getting transitions on our outputs that are determined by what we want our machine to do. Now, we do not have to count 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We're building a counter, so that is the logical thing we could do. But we can build a state table, and, and I have seen, seen them, where your first state is 0, 0, 1, your second state is uh, 0, 1, 0, and your third state is 1, 0, 0, because what you're trying to establish is combinations of inputs and outputs to then trigger um, particular things to happen at particular times. As long as we have the states available and with three flip-flops we have uh, eight states available we can actually use whatever combination we want but you'll find most people use the simplest way to count through the states and then build encoder logic later on to set up the outputs. It's just a, generally a faster way to do it. Okay, so if we're in 0, 1, 0, down will take us back to 0, 0, 1, up will take us to 0, 1, 1. So we're filling all this information in as we go. State 4, uh, state 3, sorry. State 4. Now, state 5 is the interesting one. Okay, because we're in 101, count down, dead easy, we go back to 100, count up, we stay in 101. Now what's going to happen here then is, effectively, if this input here remains a 1, then this isn't going to change, and we're never going to get to these two counts, 110 and 111. They're available in the flip-flops, they're available in the circuit because there are eight possible states available. But we're only using six of them. So effectively what we say here is, well, we're never going to get into these states, so we don't care about them. So we just fill the rest of the table with don't cares. Okay, and that is built the state table. Now the state table has taken our sketch or our state diagram into a logical form and the reason we do this is because we can now extend this state table. You probably see I've done this in Excel. I would recommend you all do it in Excel. It's far quicker and easier to keep things structured and neat in Excel. And we're going to add three uh, columns, we're actually going to add six columns but three flip-flops worth of columns because we're using J, K flip-flops. If we were using D type flip-flops these would be the D's but we're using J, K's because they do what we want a bit easier. Okay, So this is now the transition table, the state transition table. Okay, And you'll see I've colour coded Q0 is green flip-flop naught is green. Q1 is, gr is blue, flip-flop 1 is blue, and Q2 is white, stroke grey because it just eased viewing the different rows if I put the, the grey rows in as well. And flip-flop 2 is the same colour. Now just to remind us, um, there may well be a video on uh, JK flip-flops going up, depends if I have time to record it. Um, but the, the JK flip-flop has four states. The hold state, the reset state, the set state, and the toggle state. Hold, it will keep the value the same. Reset, it will set the output to zero. So it will set Q to zero. Set, as it sounds, sets Q to one. And toggle sets Q to whatever the opposite value of the current output is. So if Q is 0 and we are in toggle, 
next value of q will be 1. Now that is summarised. I'll show you this table in a moment at the bottom. We'll talk about that in a moment as we go through this. These are the steps we go through now for every transition in this circuit. So flip-flop 0. We start with flip-flop 0. Okay? And we say Q0 is 0 and it's going to transition to A0. Now if I look at my JK flip-flop, if I have J is 0, K is 0, that will keep Q at 0. Okay. However, if I have J is 0 and K is 1, then that will set the output to 0. So either of these two top two options will mean the output is 0 on the next clock pulse. So it doesn't matter what K is as long as J is 0. The output will be 0. And that's what this table at the bottom says. If I have a 0 to 0 transition then J needs to be 0 and K we don't care about. And don't cares are more flexible than noughts or ones. So we're going to put 0, don't care, in this bit here. Okay, And we do that for everything in the chat. So if we look how we have 0 and 0, 0, don't care. You'll see here I have 0 to 0 transitions all the way down here to this one here. So we'll just speed this up slightly. Okay, Now I have a 0 to 1 transition. Again, looking at my table, I either want to set my flip-flop where I have J is 1 and K is 0, or I want to toggle the output from 0 to 1, where J is 1 and K is 1. So if we look at a 0 to 1 transition in the table at the bottom, you'll see that's why it says J, as long as J is 1, we don't care about K. And so that one becomes a 1. Don't care. Transition. Okay. Now I have next I have a 1 to 0 transition. So looking at my table, 1 to 0 is don't care 1. So we put don't care 1 in our JK table for flip flop 1. Now we have a 1 to 1. And in fact, if you look, the next three are 1 to 1 transitions. 1 to 1 transition, don't care 0. And we now we don't care what the output is. And so what we get is we just fill the rest of the table up with don't cares. Okay. We do exactly the same for the blue set. So 0 to 0 transition, 0 to 0 transition, 0 to 0 transition, 0 to 1 transition, 1 don't care. 1 to 0 transition, I think that's one we've not done yet. 1 to 0 is don't care 1. 1 to 1 transition is don't care 0. 1 to 1 transition, don't care 0. Uh, 1 to 0 transition is don't care 1. And we fill this whole table in. 0 to 1 is 1 don't care. And now everything else down to here is 0 to 0 which is 0 don't care and we don't care about anything left at the bottom so we just fill all of them in as don't cares and I'm not going to go through all the logic for this third one but if you check it you'll see it is right and we just complete the whole table okay so we now have our all of our j and k values we need here to produce the transition we need from the current state to the next state. Okay. So that's our state transition table. What we then do is populate all of these J's and all of these K's and we work out the simplified logic by using a Carnot map. So you'll see here I've hidden the two flip-flops we're not looking at, we're looking at flip-flop zero 
and we build a Carnot map for J0. So the 0 here is this 0 here, because this is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So we have 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. So that would be that cell there. You can see how these populate in. Again, if you need to revise Carnot maps, there is stuff online on how to build a Carnot map. Okay. Once we have our Carnot map, remember we can group to simplify problems any ones that are adjacent to each other. We can group 2's, we can group 4's, we can group 8's and we can group uh, 16's. If we group two terms together then one of our input variables will be cancelled out and it's the one that is both 0 and 1 within the loop. Okay. So in this case I can group those two together, so we draw a loop around them, because with the don't care function, we can make it a 1 if we need to. If we don't need to make it a 1, we can make it a 0. So you see here, all of these x's we don't need to bother with, because we've just got the one high input here, which can group with the don't care here. So if we look at this table, we'll see in that loop, Q2 and C are both high, denoted by the 1 and the 1. In this cell, Q0 is low and Q1 is high. And in this cell, Q0 is high and Q1 is high. So if we had this as a function, then we'd get not Q0, Q1, Q2, C, or not uh, Q0, Q1, Q2C. The three terms that are common can be taken out of a bracket and we're left with Q0 or not Q0. So if there is a 0 and a 1 for the same variable in the loop, that variable becomes a 1 and disappears from our equation. So our simplified Boolean uh, equation for this function is simply Q1 and Q2 and C, which we've written there. We do the same for K0, and you'll see with K0, we can actually get a bigger loop. We can loop four terms. We can loop those four terms there. So now, two terms should disappear, and indeed, if you look at this loop, it should actually be fairly uh, logical that Q0 disappears because you have a 0 and a 1 and Q1 disappears because you have a 0 and a 1. So if we loop the 4 along a whole row effectively the two horizontal variables in our Carnot map are the two that disappear and we're left with not Q2 and not C. I apologise that the Q2 and C has disappeared off the side there, that was me cropping it. But it's the same as this one here. Okay, So there's our J0 and our K0 values for our K maps. We do the same for flip-flop 1, where if we look, again, slightly tricky one to do, we've got two loops here, we've got a loop up here, and we've got a loop down here. Both are just loops of two terms. Yeah. And if we look at that, Q1 will disappear from this loop because it is a 0 here and a 1 here. So we have not Q0 represented by the 0, Q2 and C. And here we have, oh, Q1 disappears again. And we have Q0 and not Q2 not C. So that's possibly the most complex of our um, functions we might need to build. Two, three input AND gates all together. If we look at uh, K1, uh, I see 
two loops again, but we can get two loops of four. So we can get a loop there, and we can get a loop there, which I've drawn in like that. If we loop four, two terms disappear, and in fact this one is, I think, the same as we did last time. So this is not Q2 and not C. This one is Q2 and C, and Q0 and Q1 disappear from both, because if you look there is a zero and a one transition for both terms somewhere within that loop. So we're left with K1 being Q2, C, or not Q2, not C. Finally, flip-flop 2, we build our K map. Now looking at this one, this one is there's a lot of big loops we can do in here. Um, so we've got a lot of decisions we can make. Um, always try and loop as big as you can. So I'm going to loop eight terms and I get three loops of eight terms because I need to get all of these, all of these five ones into a loop if I can. Yeah. We want the least number of loops that contain as many of the variables as possible. Okay. So what I get is I can get a loop there, I can get a loop across the middle there like that. Now all I've got left is this one here but what I can do is another loop of eight like that to tie that one in. It doesn't matter if you use multiple, if you have for instance these don't cares uh, in the one one column are used in effectively all three loops but as long as we are using the least number of loops we can it doesn't matter so if we look here then what we get is that looking at this my blue loop Q2 and C are a 0 or a 1 somewhere in that loop so they both disappear Q1 is a 1 in this column and a 0 in this column so that one disappears and we're left with Q0 my green loop Q0 is a 0 and a 1 0 in this column 1 in this column so it disappears and Q2 and C are a 0 and a 1 somewhere in that loop but everywhere in that loop there is at least one zero to one transition so those two disappear and we're left with Q1 and finally the red loop Q0 and Q1 are a zero or a one somewhere in that loop so both disappear Q2 is a zero in this row and a one in this row and C is a one in both rows so we're left with C so J2 is Q1 or Q0 or C. And finally for K2 what we have here now this is this is one where you have to remember your laws of K maps we've got two loops okay one loop there which is hopefully fairly obvious but our second loop is not necessarily as obvious as big a loop as it can be you might think oh I can loop those four but actually a Carnot map loops around the edges as well. So this row is also adjacent. So this bottom row, let's get that right, is also adjacent to the top row. So we can actually do a loop around the top like that of eight as well. That's all our ones tied into two loops. So my red loop, let's look at it again. We should have one term because we've got a group of eight. So two term, uh, three terms disappear, so we should be left with one. And looking at this, Q0 is a 0 here and a 0 here. Q1 is a 0 and a 1, so it disappears. Q2 and C are 0 or a 1 somewhere within that vertical loop. And so we're left with Q2 being 0, which is not 
q uh, sorry q naught being zero which is not q naught and with my blue loop q1 and q naught are zero or one somewhere through this um, row so they both disappear q2 is a zero on the top row and a one on the bottom row so q2 disappears c is a zero in both rows so we're left with not c and so what our k2 is is not q0 from the red loop and not c from the blue loop now we have all of our logic we build the circuits to give the outputs now I've used some software called Multisim to do this there is a student uh, evaluation edition available for free but it does only last seven days but if you need some software to do this Multisim is industry standard and is very good um, so I'm going to start by building my circuit uh, and these are my circuits. now these circuits Multisim allows me to build something called sub circuits so you'll see I've pulled in Q1, Q2 and C to my sub circuit and I've got two outputs on my sub circuit of J0 and K0 you'll see them make the full circuit somewhere but because J0 is Q1 and Q2 and C I literally put A3 and put AND gate in connect Q1, Q2 and C to the three inputs and the output goes to J0 K0 is not Q2 not C so I put the NOT gates within my sub circuit just to keep the main circuit cleaner not Q2 here not C here again through an AND gate and that goes to K0 so this is how we build the logic for our J's and our K's Falstad is good but it gets very cluttered quickly um, if we look at our second sub circuit as I said this is the more, most complex one Okay, so I've got Q0, Q2 and C coming in because they're basically all the inputs I need and I've done not Q0, not Q2, not C and I've built my three input AND gate Q0 not Q2 not C and not Q0 Q2 and C all to them together because it's that or that and the output of that OR gate goes to my J1 okay. my K1 Q2 and C or not Q2 and not C or together that's my K1 effectively this circuit here okay so this is what is within this block here okay and you just saw a glimpse but I'm just going to go on this logic analyzer produces an output so what I've got is at the top my clock pulse and then I've got my three flip-flop inputs for us to analyze and if we look at this you'll see as the clock is running up to here the switch is open so we have a zero going in so we have zero 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 coming in and it stays at zero 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 until the switch is thrown which is around here okay this dotted line here from this point on we count upwards so we get 0 0 1 0 1 0 0 1 1 1 0 0 1 0 1 and we should we're at the top of our count and it remains at 1 0 1 until round about here the switch is opened again and it counts down back to zero so that's just an example from the logic analyzer of how the count is doing exactly what we designed it to do. Well, I hope that has been helpful and that is a complete design process okay. and I hope 
um, you find it useful when you're trying to design your circuits. Thank you very much.